Hello and welcome to this last asynchronous video for our first week. Now, today we're going to talk in this video about integrated circuits and programmable logic devices. Now, one or more logic gates can be fabricated into a single semiconductor silicon chip. And this is what we call an integrated circuit. Now, bear in mind this idea that we've always defined one building block, in this case, the gate, and then we use it to fabricate something more complicated. In this case, the integrated circuit. Integrated circuits can be roughly categorized in these four categories. SSI, which stands for small scale integration. This means one to 20 gates. Then anything above 20 up to 200 gates, we call it MSI, which stands for medium scale integration. Then we got the large scale integration or LSI, which involves anything from 200 up to a million gates or even more. So this is a big jump here in the scale. And then it can get immense. We got the very large scale integration or VLSI that has more than a few million of transistors. To provide an example, an NVIDIA Pascal has 16 billion transistors. Now, this is an example of an SSI. This is how it looks in real life. This is a diagram of its equivalent in switches, and this is a diagram of its equivalent in uh, logic gates. Now, notice the GND and VDD here. GND is an abbreviation for ground, Positive and negative voltages are relative to the ground, but note that in digital electronics, the ground nearly always is the most negative voltage level. And then, of course, you got VDD here, which is the direct current voltage applied uh, on the other side. This is another example. It's the quad to input NOR gate. That is another example a hex inverter. Now, the purpose of showing all this is not to explain them uh, or to make you think about them, is just to introduce you to the idea because these are things that you're going to uh, see in more detail during DB2. And this is the most advanced integrated circuit in our examples. This is the NVIDIA Tesla V100 accelerator. It has a peak performance of 7.8 teraflops per second. Now, this is immense. If you want to see more, if you want to find out more about this, you can go and visit this link. OK, now what's the next thing? The next thing to discuss today is programmable logic integrated circuits. Now, a PLA, or otherwise this means programmable logic array, is a set of NOT, AND, and OR gates. So what is special compared to what we've seen so far? Well, they are connected in a programmable way. This is what makes them special. And they're generically called programmable logic devices, or PLDs. This is an example here. Now, as we've seen previously, you define one building block and then you build something more complex. This way you can take PLDs and construct a complex programmable logic device, otherwise known as CPLD. Uh, this means that you take a number of PLDs and you connect them together in a programmable way and you construct a CPLD. And the last thing, the last concept introduced to you today is the field programmable gate array, otherwise known as FPGA. This is where you get a number of logic blocks that can be connected in a programmable way. An FPGA is a type of a programmable logic chip that is great because uh, you can program it to do almost anything that you want. Uh, an FPGA architecture allows the chip to have very high logic capacity. And with that, we conclude this series of introductory videos for the course of DCS. We are expecting you all in our first live session 
either online or uh, in real life. See you there.